In the final day of qualification matches in men's hockey in Group A, South Africa and India were both vying for the last semi-final place. South Africa needed to win to progress, while India could go through with a draw. Your commentators are Sean Kerley and Leslie Murdoch. Dharamar Singh getting the ball over the halfway now for India. Down that right flank, he is steaming towards the ball. Gubaj Singh looking for the penalty corner and gets it. Two minutes gone in the first half, first penalty corner. Well, it's a good move, isn't it, down the right there. Indians showing their pace as well as skill. And the ball coming up off Norris Jones's stick. It is going to Raganath, and it's goal already! Under three minutes into the match, where the South Africans thought that it might have been going to Rapinda, but no, Raganath gets the goal. So setting the standard early is Adam Kearns, the Australian umpire. He has pulled a corner on the South Africans outside the circle, which you can if you deem it to be a deliberate foul. Rapinda at the goal, and goal number two for India. Two conversions from three penalty corners, one for Rapinda and the other, Raganath, already scored. Well, that's a fantastic corner, isn't it? surge through Duravmir and it's three on four and it is goal number three for India field goal time beautiful uh, goal really great position here look at that Ramandeep Singh putting the ball in beautiful finish and again India pouring on open goal and what a finish Sunil on the end makes it 4-0 India well it's too many times you just can't afford to give the ball away anywhere near your goal to these Indian players captain oh he's got one have they got a touch in there they had to be the next team that scored Tane Patton gets on the end of an Austin Smith Pass. I think that the Indians totally weren't expecting it. It has been the area that has been fragile for India. Yeah, well, look at that. A great ball through the middle. I think it just clips Sardar Singh's ankle on the way through. Only one person awake and alive to that. It's four on four. And does the ball catch a foot in that circle? And they're asking the question. It's in the air. Penalty corner. Good skill and team play by South Africa. They're definitely getting back into this game now. From Patton ejecting through now at the goal. Oh, and they've scored another one through the captain, Austin Smith. Number two for South Africa, and they're just two goals now between these two sides. Well, it's a great cross, good vision, but look at that, just managed to avoid head-on collision with that upright. As we enter into the last few seconds of this crucial match, it is India marching on to the top four playoffs. They have beaten South Africa 5-2. to two. And they will look ahead now to the semi-finals. Elsewhere on day eight in the table tennis, the Delhi bronze medalists in the men's doubles, Sarath Kamalachanta and Amaraj Anthony Arputharaj of India were taken to a fourth game by the English pair, Danny Reed and Sam Walker. And they've won it, Achanta and Arputharaj. They will move through to the semi-final. England will be represented at the semi-final stage though as the number three seeds Paul Drinkle and Liam Pitchforth edged out Kadri Aruna and Segon Toriola, the fifth seeds from Nigeria. Oh. Relentless pursuit. In the women's singles, the top seed Feng Tan Wei of Singapore is safely through to the semi-finals after dispatching Li Bei Wei of Malaysia in four straight games. She's through to the semi-finals of the women's singles. 
Singapore's domination in this event was apparent as the second seed Yu Meng Yu saw off Canadian Zhang Mo by four games to one. Oh, fantastic rally. It's peppering the backhand of Zhang Mo there and then just flashing across in the end to the forehand side. Good change of attack there for the uh, ever alert Singaporean. And Jay Lin made it three out of four for Singapore in the semi final lineup as she defeated Monika Batra of India. Well, it was a magnificent effort. Jian Fang Lee of Australia took the last semi final place after she defeated Naomi Owen of Wales. What a way to finish it. England have extended their lead at the top of the medal table. Australia are still in second, while Canada's five gold medals on the day means they surpass their gold medal tally from Delhi four years ago. 36 nations have now medalled at these games, more than half the countries taking part. And that's how it stands at the end of day eight in Glasgow.